unashamedly, I want to see hymns and hops and gospel on tap all across the country because I believe that we are seeing a movement happen, a movement that was started hundreds and thousands of years ago because people used to meet in pubs and sing and talk all the time. So this is nothing original with us, right? Yeah. And uh, we want to do it. And, you know, I hear Tyler talk a lot about living legacy and really up until, <laughs> you want to do that? Okay. Um, really up until yesterday, Monday, when I started this journey of waking up every day thinking about all good things, I didn't really understand what it, what, what it meant for him, but I understand what it means for now, for me now. Like when I think about what I want to leave for people, I want to leave, I want to leave a legacy that you can push boundaries and take risks for the gospel, that you can do things that are countercultural to the religious folks but that you believe that is what the Father is calling you to do and the Spirit's empowering you to do it. Like you can go do it. And I want my boys to realize that they can push boundaries and that they can do things for other people and for Jesus. What's up, dude? You wanna come sit with me? Can you say hi to Mr. Pablo? Come here, we're gonna get on camera soon. You wanna come see me? Oh, like, oh, there we go. People are gonna think that like I staged you sitting on my lap. You literally just ran downstairs. But like, I want to leave something for them that they're like, my dad, my mom took a risk, you know, pushed a boundary. Um, yeah, you're gonna sit there? Like, it will affect them, right? Obviously. But I want to leave a legacy that people are touched and impacted by the gospel, and that even when I'm gone, that the impact is so strong that, that the gospel continues to transform their life and transform the lives of the next generation. I am extremely excited about this episode and introducing you to Jonathan Parker. Jonathan is someone that I respect tremendously. I have a lot of love for this man. Uh, he's going through an interesting transition period in his life. And I believe that he is falling into what now is his legacy. And he is living on purpose, with a purpose, and he's going to impact thousands and thousands and thousands of lives over the next few years. I want you to hear about that. I want you to hear the story surrounding it. I want you to meet his family. And I just want you to know this guy um, because he is someone that is worth knowing. And this vlog is about living legacies and he is living his legacy out right now. And I think it should be shared. So enjoy. So this is unconventional. So if you're watching this and you grew up in a church, or you grew up with a religious background um, and you are like, wait, you talk about Jesus and gospel stuff over beers? Yes. So some of you just need to take that in, right? This is <laughs> unconventional. Um, we meet in normal spaces, just everyday spots. Um, we don't have brick and mortar. I'm not saying we never will, but the point is to be in the community. Yeah. So Gospel and Tap meets at Barley's Tap Room downtown, and Barley's has been awesome. Some of the best pizza in town. You should go there. Mm. They've just been remarkable. And this is a place for guys to come, and we leave dogma and judgment at the door and embrace vulnerability and transparency at the table. And this is a place for guys not to be their job title, not to be their income, not to be their upbringing, not to be their background, but to be who they are and wrestle through aspects of their faith and of their life so that they can, they can one, get it out, and two, that they can receive feedback from people who have no reason to lie to them, Sure. right? So you sign up, you pay money, like guys pay money to be at this table, and when you sign up for that, guys want you to be all in and all there. So Gospel on Tap's pretty simple. It's two hours, 6.30 to 8.30. We meet on Monday and Wednesday nights. Right now in Greenville, we'll probably expand that. Um, the same group or those different, different groups? groups, right. Yeah. So you sign up for a Monday group or you can sign up for a Wednesday yeah. group. And when you sign up, the guys are put at a table fairly randomly and they're with the same guys for all eight weeks. Mm. Um, so they're at, they get to know those guys deeply, quickly. Yeah. So you can sign up for a Monday night session, which goes eight weeks straight. You said the same table, or Wednesday, you go eight weeks straight. And during those eight weeks, when you arrive at the table, um, you answer five questions. Five questions I've used here, five questions I've used everywhere. High, low, learn, fail, ask. What's the high of your week? What's the low of your week? What have you learned this week? This is a huge one. What have you felt this week? And ask, what can we pray for you this week? And for most of our guys, for most of the men who go through Gospel on Tap, especially the first time, they haven't been that open and honest with anyone, let alone 
a fairly group of strangers mm -hmm. in years. Wow. And then to talk about your feelings, <laughs> talk about your feel like, what do you mean how I felt? Like, what are you feeling right now? <laughs> Anxious, <laughs> like, I don't like this. <laughs> awesome. Right, but to be able to share, but by the week, by week three, by week four, guys are crying with one another. Guys are sharing and caring for one another. And then they get to the ask, what well, can we pray for you this week? And then a guy, like, it's very practical. Then a guy to your right or left prays for you, if they feel comfortable. Yeah. We have guys that say, no, I'm not praying this week, I'm not in a good space. Okay, that's fine, next guy. But these guys get prayed for in a public setting, mm -hmm. right? Barley's Tap Room and Craft Beer, like in a public setting, they get prayed for eight, eight straight weeks. We met in an opera. Mm hmm Freshman year, second semester. Jessica had short hair. She had Dr. Seuss socks on. Oh my on. goodness, it was a society thing. Yeah, yeah, you might, what, what's a society? A little gathering of? It's a Christian sorority. There you go. <laughs> Christian sorority. Uh, yeah, so we met in an opera, and we technically had met years before at the right. camp you grew up in. Right. Well, we didn't know that until you ran back to your dorm room and called my dorm room seven or eight times before I got back. Right. Saying, I know, I know where I met her. I know where I met her. Have exactly. her call me back. Yeah, I was very excited. Yeah. That night, I actually called my mother and told her that I met the woman I was going to marry. Mm -hmm. So we dated for five years and we yeah. broke up three times. We? <laughs> we, sorry. I broke up with you <laughs> three times. Uh, uh. <clears throat> but I think that, <clears throat> but I think those five years is what allows us to do most of the stuff we do now because of everything we had to go through. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, some of that you got me comfortable with taking risks. Mm -hmm. And you well calibrated me to the lifestyle that you were not going to shake off, is that you were moving forward headstrong mm -hmm. with what you wanted in sight and you were going for it. And right. I thought maybe it would slow down, but it never did. Never slowed down. No. But I think part of that journey too was breaking up with you three times. My parents had problems, your parents had problems, like problems with us getting back together or us dating. Um, but what I loved about you those five years was you were determined and independent while also being completely comfortable being dependent in a relationship. So I think I learned to trust mm -hmm. you and be dependent on you and follow you, which a lot of guys don't want to do, especially in the Christian circles we grew up, right? Mm -hmm. It's like guys always in charge, guys always leading, mm -hmm. guys always does this. But following you and some of those things yeah. are really important. I can't let you go. Until the end of day, just letting you know we let water flow. Working nine to five, I bring your So we're sitting there, and I'm bemoaning <laughs> my life as a 30 year old. Adult temper tantrum. <laughs> you like keep saying that. <laughs> yeah, I was whiny mm. and complaining. Everyone else was the problem. I wasn't taking any responsibility. Mm. And and you were just sitting there. I mean, we talked about ministry too, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, Trisha was working in nonprofits. I was working in nonprofits. So we talked about mission. Yes. And, I mean, it, it wasn't all me just whining and complaining, but sure. that was definitely. They were both brilliant in what, what they're doing, and we right. wanted to hear about it. Hear about it. Yeah. So it was, there was massive positive conversation. But towards the end of the conversation, I'm, I'm in my final, like, I don't know, final descent into why I'm perfect and everyone else is, you know, missing the boat. And <laughs> Troy cuts me off in the middle of a sentence, or yeah, cuts me off in the middle of my sentence. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, he just cuts me off. And he says, how many years are you gonna waste waiting for permission to do what you already know you should be doing? Mm. Go get He's stretchy watch. <laughs> Whoa. It was like stretchy too. Stretch Stretchy Yeah. <laughs> Hey, can you go get worship videos ready? And we'll play some music oh, upstairs? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, let's go get music ready. Awesome. When we made the decision, when Jessica and I made the decision that stepping into All Good Things, the, the name of the nonprofit that oversees hymns and hops and gospel on tap, when we made that decision, we had, for us to be able to step in to All Good Things, that means we had to step out of, you know, Fellowship Greenville, the, the job that I had. And that, that hurt, right? Obviously. But stepping into something like this was not an, like, 
not doing it was not an option. I mean, Jessica even said one time in the kitchen, this is not an option. This is a decision of obedience. Like, will we obey what the spirit is leading us to do? Will we step in, in faith and obey? And when I talk about in faith, like we didn't do any planning. We had no strategic plan. We didn't have any money in the bank, but we knew it's what we were supposed to do. Because so many people had experienced the gospel, the good news about Jesus. So many people had reconnected in community and, and, and seen Jesus in a new light. Like one of the things we like to say is to reintroduce people to Jesus, right? And we were doing it at, at unique but normal places like uh, Barley's and 13 Stripes Brewery. And, and people were coming, hundreds of people were coming. Uh, I regularly said, God, if you didn't want me to do this, you did a really bad job of showing me. Um, because he just continued to grow and we, we keep things real simple. So tell everybody where they can go to get a hold of you. Because what I know is there's going to be people that are listening to this that are like, man, if this is something that I could get behind. This is right. something that I would love to support. That'd be awesome. Um, how can they find you to have that conversation? Um, uh, and for those that are in the general area, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, right. they may be one of those locations that yeah. want to open up right. um, and have, <clears throat> have these gatherings in, in their towns. Yep. Um, where can they have those conversations? Great question. So you can learn more about Gospel on Tap at gospelontap.com and at Facebook, Gospel on Tap. And you can direct message me from either one of those lo locations. Um, Hymns and Hops, check out the Instagram, at Hymns and Hops, Facebook, at Hymns and Hops, and then hymnsandhops.com for more information. And get on your calendar. Next Hymns and Hops is December 9th at Revel Event Center, downtown Greenville. It's a little too cold to be at the brewery mm -hmm. in December. Uh, so we're thankful that Revel's opening up their doors. But if you want to connect with me and just kind of follow along with the journey, um, you can email me at talk at the Jonathan R. Parker .com. Talk at the Jonathan R. Parker .com. You can follow me on um, Facebook at that handle and then Instagram at the Jonathan R. Parker and you can just message me through that um, as well. You can give on both websites but if you just want more information or you just want to talk uh, shoot me an email uh, uh, at that email address or just connect with me on one of the social media platforms. Love to talk with you and again come on in on that Sunday. Drive in December 9th. We're going to start singing at 7. I would get there around 6 uh, and you'll be out the door by 8.45.